everybody, it's Ruby here today, and I thought that I would do a book review slash discussion on Mouse by uh, Art Spiegelman. The reason I'm doing a discussion on this rather than a review is because um, I think that a lot of the themes in this have really less to do with the overall narration or depiction of a story and more to do with the actual content, and I'll get to that in a second. And I'm going to put this down because it's actually kind of heavy, it's two volumes. Um, so this is a book that I think is fairly well known, at least within the graphic novel community, if not sort of in the general booktube slash book lovers community. Um, it's sort of an integral piece that a lot of people will recommend, and it was something that was actually in my school library for quite a while. And it was recommended to me a lot of times, but I hadn't gotten around to it until I actually noticed that the author was doing a um, talk in my city, so I bought tickets and realized that I should probably be reading his stuff before I'm going to go see him. Um, so this is a book by Art Spiegelman, and he interviews his father about his experiences in World War II. So this is after his mom actually commits suicide, and um, his father burns all of her diaries, so the only account that you really have is of his father, and so it has to do with their conversations as well as the overall story. Um, and it is used with animal characters, so each um, kind of animal is the different ethnicity or nationality. So you have mice as um, Jewish people, you have uh, cats as um, Germans, frogs as French, dogs as Americans, um, poles as pigs, and uh, I'm not sure, really sure why he did that. It could be maybe to make it seem less emotional or more emotional, a way of kind of getting the reader to kind of step outside of history maybe, or maybe it was just because he didn't want to draw a lot of people. Um, but this was a fairly interesting book, because I have been interested in World War II for quite a while. Um, but this book, I think, um, is a lot harder to review, because it is a book that is about World War II, so a lot of it is going to be more about um, the things that someone went through than it is going to be about necessarily narration or plot. Um, and I really want to talk about uh, how this is different than a lot of other World War II stuff that I've read. So I used to be very interested in World War II. Um, my whole family pretty much is, and I've read up on it quite a bit over my lifetime. Um, but this particular book was a lot different than the other ones because I find that a lot of stories and people who um, will write books like Night by Ellie Weissel or uh, Anne Frank, um, are very young when they do it. And I think that's just because uh, maybe they're they're more likely to be published or maybe it, has, maybe it has to do with after a certain amount of years after World War II, people started writing it. So the people who survived are probably were probably a certain age during that time. I'm not sure. Maybe there are a lot of books about people who are adults during World, World War II, but I haven't really come across that many. Um, but this particular book was interesting because it talked about some of the desperation that happened uh, because the main character was about 30 when this happened uh, and he was a successful factory owner. Um, he had just married into a, a, a rich family um, and because of that, because of the amount of money that they had, they could easily pay people off. So they would pay people off to get nice houses or bunkers or um, food or uh, certain kinds of jobs once they were actually in the concentration camps. Uh, and I found that particularly interesting. So the main character was always um, manipulating his surroundings, always bribing people to get better jobs, or to get his wife to be in the same camp as him, or to uh, escape, or to talk to people, or whatever. Um, and he came across a lot of people that he knew from his community, and that helped him quite a bit. And I thought that was particularly interesting, because although there is still a feeling of helplessness and a feeling that there's not much you can do in a particular setting like that, I also felt like people did do stuff like that. Um, and it, I don't think it's any better or worse than other people's stories, but it was definitely a different take on it. Because really, what else are you going to do if, when you're starving? you're probably going to want to trade things, right? 
Another thing too that was fairly interesting is that you got to see snapshots of the conversations between the father and the son compared to what was going on. Um, and the father and son didn't get along very well. At least they had a lot of arguments at that particular moment in time. Um, and uh, the author explicitly says in the book that he wants to make his father seem as honest as possible when this is published, um, which I think is sort of a good way of showing someone's memory. Um, but at the same time, there were a lot of moments that were very funny, and I felt like I was kind of laughing at the expense of someone, but I did understand sort of why someone was doing that. Um, and because you would get those snapshots in accordance with each other, you would get sort of the reasons why his father had certain kind of tics or um, obsessions. Father was very cheap, um, something that uh, the son kind of said to be like, well, I don't want to be racist, but like he's the archetypical view of stingy Jew or whatever, but you could easily see that the reason why he was like that is because when he was going through World War II, um, the thing that kept him going was that he was saving things so that he could trade them. So he would sh save cigarettes so he could bribe people, or he could save bread so that he could get help when he was sick. Um, because that's all people really wanted was food and, and stuff like that. They were all trying to survive. Um, and that was mentioned too, that like maybe he didn't survive, maybe he was just continuing to live past it. Um, so it was very impactful and I'm glad that I read it. And like, this is another one of those stories where I guess it's extremely hard to sort of describe without just saying for people to read it. And I can understand easily now why people kept saying, just read it. Like just, you have to read this book. Um, so read it. I give it like a four to five or like a four and a and a half out of five. It isn't like the most brilliant thing I've ever read, um, and it isn't quite to my style, but it um, was very well written, and it was, it kept me going, and I read it all in one day, and I think that um, by itself should be sort of an indication of how good this book is. So, just let me know what you guys think. Have you read this book? Have you heard about it? Uh, am I right to say that this is a popular book, or is this the first time you're hearing it? Otherwise, like, subscribe, do your thing, and I will talk to you guys later.